Hi, I'm Paul Malko, one of the creators and designers of Union City Alliance, a new deck and board building game for two to four players or solo play. And today I'm here to talk to you about the Central City deck in our Heroes Unite base game, Downtown Union City. Union City is not only the board that you build over the course of the game and the home of the heroes that you play, it's also an integral part of the story. Union City is not just a place with a couple superheroes, it is the superhero capital of the world. There are more superheroes there than anywhere else on the planet. The same way you would go to LA to see movie stars, you go to Union City to see superheroes. And at least in part because of that, there are so many other over-the-top, wild, and extraordinary things that happen in Union City. This is a give-and-take relationship. Over the course of millennia, the location of Union City has been a, a hub of supernatural, scientific, and overall superheroic activity. And that's reflected in the downtown city deck. Strange occurrences, unique situations, perilous problems, and of course, ruthless enemies will be found in the city deck as you explore Union City. When you set up a game, you can choose to add a scenario. In the base game, this will be the Street Pirates, the Sinister Starlet, or Bargum's Big Wheel Circus. But the downtown deck will always be present, at least uh, in half the city deck. Before we get into the cards themselves, what one should always remember about the city cards is that they are a bonus. They're a reward for the players for exploring the board. They're all good for you in various ways, even the ones that are somewhat bad for you in the short term, like some of the enemies or challenges that have a negative effect. Once you overcome them, once you defeat them, the reward when you take them down is more than worth the uh, problems they gave you earlier on. While running into a detrimental city card might flummox your turn, overall, they're going to be a bigger advantage to you in the long term. Exploring Union City and finding city cards is good. About 60% of the average city deck is challenges, and of those challenges, about two-thirds are speed challenges. So speed is the most important resource for exploring the board and dealing with the challenges that arise. Players should definitely not skimp on speed. While Valor and Might might have more appealing effects, um, like achieving cards and beating up enemies, speed is absolutely essential, and without it, players will have a much more difficult time achieving victory. Old Lady Up a Tree is one of the simplest examples, giving you a load of heroism in exchange for just some speed. That exchange rate is much better than Valor, but it requires you exploring to find that card. Note that whoever gains that heroism is not limited to the hero who resolved the challenge. It says any hero gains four heroism, which means you can be strategic about which of your allies will get the reward for rescuing Mrs. Moskowitz. Autograph signing also gets you heroism, but in a more tactical way. With autograph signing, you get more heroism the more speed you have. Note that you don't actually have to exert that speed, you just need to have gained it. So if you hit autograph signing with seven speed, you can gain seven heroism and still roar across the board, explore or overcome other speed challenges. This sort of card rewards careful tactical play and in some cases, waiting till a bit later on when you have more speed is an especially good idea. While both Old Lady Up a Tree and autograph signing are simple to overcome, cards like Hostage Situation are a much trickier feat. It requires three speed, and you also have to have started your turn on that panel, making it a significantly larger tactical cost to rescue the hostages. However, the reward is correspondingly larger, giving you a significant heroism, and also destroying a weak card in your deck, giving you better odds of drawing your best cards in later turns. While card destruction isn't incredibly prevalent in Union City, city cards are a great way of accomplishing this, and many of them have the ability to destroy cards as a reward. While many challenges, the majority in fact, require speed to resolve, there are also a number that require valor. Speed challenges usually give you heroism, but valor challenges often give you tactical effects. This is because on an, any given turn, heroes can use bravery to convert valor to heroism. They cannot do that with speed. So rewards for valor challenges tend to be different, like Captain Great. 
Captain Great is a semi-retired hero. He tends to hang out around City Hall and be a, an unofficial tour guide and friendly face in Union City. But with a little encouragement from the heroes, he could still pack a wallop, dealing substantial damage to an enemy anywhere on the board before he heads back home for a cold glass of milk and maybe a little time with his feet up. Captain Great is pretty straightforward. Exert Valor, do damage to an enemy anywhere on the board. But there are other cards like Phone Booth that have more tactical versatility. While spending four valor to get a card with four costs does not seem that exciting, the ability to put that card into someone's hand gives a great deal of flexibility, giving any hero you choose the exact card they need at the moment. You can even exert the valor to put a card with speed or might or some other relevant ability into your own hand, changing the makeup of your hand mid-turn. A cult symbol works similarly. This challenge is also uh, four valor to confront, but Letting a hero grab the best card from their discard pile for whatever situation they're in, as well as getting a bonus card destruction, makes this particularly powerful. Many games have turned on someone getting a second use out of awesome cards like Time Lost Prince, Alpha Predator, Redshift, courtesy of this sigil of sorcery. As we said, most enemies in the city deck are relatively low danger compared to villain enemies. This is most true of the Ambitious Mugger, who is the absolute lowest end of the power curve, as well as the lowest end of the IQ distribution. While defeating this thug only takes a single might card or a medium strength breeze, doing so gives you some useful heroism. On the other hand, the cybernetically enhanced Steelheart is much tougher foe, with a fair amount of stamina and a strong defensive ability. While his metal chassis makes him tough to defeat, his fight is relatively low, especially in issue one. As difficult as he is to take down, once he's defeated, the reward is big, giving two heroes four heroism each. He may be a foe that sticks around on the board for a little bit, for one reason or another, but once he's defeated, he'll be well worth the effort. The difficulty in Steelheart relies on his tough nature and getting enough might in order to pierce his metal skin. But for American Patriot X, the main difficulty is getting to him. The sniper's debut moves him to the Hero HQ starting panel where he gets the best field of fire, meaning someone will need to rush back and take him out. He also doesn't move when he threatens, making him camp out and take pot shots at the heroes from afar. Again, his fight isn't the best, especially if you get him in issue one. When the board is smaller, he's a lot easier to deal with. But one way or the other, heroes need to head back to the starting panel in order to defeat this gun-toting foe. But when they take him out, heroes will not only get heroism, but extra card draw. Well worth taking a stroll back to the starting panel. The giant robot squid is one of the iconic foes of Union City Alliance, perpetually popping up in the harbor to threaten heroes and ships alike. He's certainly a dangerous enemy with massive stamina for a city card and a brutal fight score. However, the squid has a threat of zero, meaning it will only attack enemies who are on its panel. So while early in the game, heroes will probably not be able to deal with this cybernetic cephalopod, they do not have to. They simply leave it be until they feel like a serious battle. If a hero does manage to take down this monstrosity, then they'll achieve a huge reward, destroying one of their cards and putting a card of their choice into any hero's deck. Lord of Night and Mother Munchausen are also threat zero enemies who the heroes can deal with if and when they choose. In each case, they have defensive abilities that make it hard to do so. Lord of Night requires that heroes spend an equal amount of valor and might to do damage, and Mother Munchausen forces you to discard a might card before you can attack her. But if players do manage to defeat these vile villains, they'll gain substantial rewards. Alternatively, if players do not feel like engaging them, then they're free, somewhat unheroically, to just ignore them and get on with the supervillain. Remember that in a city of superheroes and supervillains like Union City, there's always an undercurrent of crime. There's always smaller villains who are lurking around up to no good, and prioritizing which enemies you take your time to defeat is important for a hero. After all, Lord of Night and Mother Munchausen are nothing compared to Alexander the Great or the Pteranodon of the Dino Mafia. If Crush is wrecking up the city, 
Maybe it's best to leave the Lord of Night up to his shadowy machinations while you deal with a bigger threat. As mentioned, in general city cards are not serious difficulties. There are a few exceptions, however, where the cards can cause brutal problems if not dealt with, and they have correspondingly huge rewards. These are issue 2 exclusive cards that can only be played in issue 2 or later. If one will be played in issue 1, when the heroes generally would not be able to deal with it, that card instead goes onto the bottom of the city deck and might come up again later in the game. Escaped Prisoners is a challenge that unleashes a horde of criminals into the city, making every fight more dangerous until they're rounded up. However, if a player does manage to do so, then they'll receive extremely powerful card destruction, especially in a game with more players. Train Derailment also has a particularly nasty effect when it's played, robbing each hero of some hard-won heroism. However, if the heroes manage to get things back on track, so to speak, they'll get heroism back with interest, as well as some excellent healing. Even for these more dangerous Issue 2 City cards, the rewards massively outweigh the penalties. Great White is just a run-of-the-mill mutant neo-Nazi man-shark, but he can sure bring the beatings. In Issue 1, he'd be capable of decimating the heroes, but in Issue 2, you can generally deal with a big brute, especially with a little bit of defense and preparation. It's not difficult to dodge his arrogant yet powerful attacks. When the players do bring him down, they get a tremendous reward with card destruction and heroism. There are lots more challenges and enemies that you'll find while you explore Union City and go through the central city deck. Downtown Union City is a thriving, interesting, and sometimes dangerous place, but overall, exploring the city is great fun and a great reward. You can check out the Downtown Union City deck when you play a game of Union City Alliance right now on Tabletop Simulator with our free demo edition. Check it out and be sure to go to our Kickstarter and support us now. We have one week left and we're counting on you to help put us over the top. Thanks again and we'll see you in Union City, heroes.